communicate with other civilizations, our technology must reach across not merely interplanetary distances, but interstellar distances. This is the largest radio radar telescope on the planet Earth, the Arecibo Observatory. It's located in a remote valley on the island of Puerto Rico. It sends and receives radio signals, but it's so large and powerful that it could communicate with an identical radio telescope 15,000 light years away, halfway to the center of the Milky Way galaxy. The Arecibo Observatory has been used, although sparingly, to search for signals from civilizations in space, and just once, to broadcast a message to a distant star cluster called M13. But is there anyone out there to talk to? With 400 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy alone, could ours be the only one with an inhabited planet? How much more likely it is that the galaxy is throbbing and humming with advanced societies. Perhaps near one of those pinpoints of light in our night sky, someone quite different from us is glancing idly at the star we call the sun and entertaining just for a moment an outrageous speculation. If there are millions of technical civilizations in the Milky Way, each capable of radio astronomy, how far away is the nearest one? If they're distributed more or less randomly through space, then the nearest one will be some 200 light years away. But within 200 light years, there are hundreds of thousands of stars. To find the needle in this haystack requires a dedicated and systematic search. There are many cosmic radio sources having nothing to do with intelligent life. So how would we know that we were receiving a message? The transmitting civilization could make it very easy for us if they wished. Imagine we're in the course of a systematic search or in the midst of some more conventional radio observations. And suppose one day we find a strong signal slowly emerging, not just some background hiss, but a methodical series of pulses. The numbers 1, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, a signal made of prime numbers, numbers divisible only by one and themselves. There is no natural astrophysical process that generates prime numbers. We would have to conclude that someone fond of elementary mathematics was saying hello. This would be no more than a beacon to attract our attention. The main message will be subtler, more hidden, far richer. We may have to work hard to find it. But the beacon signal alone would be profoundly significant. It would mean that someone has learned to survive technological adolescence, that self-destruction is not inevitable, that we also may have a future. Such knowledge, it seems to me, might be worth a great price. Very likely, some new Champollion would go on to decode the main message using our interstellar Rosetta Stone, the common language of science and mathematics. Think of the glories of an exotic civilization far more advanced than we, collected 
by the great radio telescopes of Earth. Perhaps they would send a compilation of the knowledge of a million inhabited worlds, the Encyclopedia Galactica. The receipt of an interstellar message would be one of the major events in human history and the beginning of the deprovincialization of our planet. A serious and systematic radio search for extraterrestrial civilizations may come soon. Preliminary steps are being taken both in the United States and in the Soviet Union. It's comparatively inexpensive. A search taking decades would cost less than the budget overruns on a single modest weapons system in a single year. Our technology is now fully adequate for this great challenge. But no systematic search program has ever been approved by any nation on Earth. When will we decide to search for what other civilizations there may be in the vast cosmic ocean? But whether there are only a few advanced galactic civilizations or millions, shouldn't some of them have voyaged to Earth? On one hand, we've argued that if even a small fraction of technical civilizations learn to live with themselves and their potential for self-destruction, then there should by now be enormous numbers of them in the galaxy. On the other hand, despite claims about UFOs and ancient astronauts, there is no credible evidence that the Earth has been visited now or ever. But isn't this a contradiction? If the nearest civilization is, say, uh, 200 light years away, it would take them only 200 years to get from there to here at the speed of light. Even if they were traveling a thousand times slower than that, beings from a nearby civilization could have come here during the tenure of human beings on the Earth. So why aren't they here? There's many possible answers. One is that maybe we're the first. Some technical civilization has to be first to emerge in the history of the galaxy. Or maybe all technical civilizations promptly destroy themselves. That seems to me very unlikely. Or maybe there's some problem with interstellar spaceflight that we've been too dumb to figure out. Or maybe they are here, but uh, in hiding because of some ethic of non-interference with emerging civilizations. We might imagine them curious and dispassionate, watching us to determine whether this year again we manage to avoid self-destruction. But there's another explanation which is consistent with everything else we know, and that's that it's a big cosmos. If a great many years ago, an advanced interstellar spacefaring civilization emerged 200 light years away, why would they come here? They would have no reason to think there was something special about the Earth. There are no signs of human technology, not even our radio transmissions which uh, have had time to go 200 light years. From their point of view, all nearby planetary systems might seem equally attractive for exploration. 